Welcome back. The central promise of cryptocurrency was to revolutionize the world of finance as a decentralized system that took finance away from the control of central bank authorities. Controlled instead by blockchain, crypto, which includes Bitcoin, would be the disruptor of many industries and give access to wealth for all with cheaper, faster money transfers. With no central control, it was reasoned, collapse couldn't happen as there'd be no single point of failure. Earlier this month, one of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, FTX, filed for bankruptcy. It has liabilities of $9 billion and its collapse has led to millions of people losing their money. Now, Sam Bankman-Fried has been accused of running the company as his personal fiefdom. So does the collapse of FTX demonstrate that government regulations over finance are, after all, essential? Nigel Green is the CEO and founder of the De Beer Group, one of the world's largest independent and financial advisory and fintech organizations. Uh, hello and welcome. Um, so is this the beginning of the end for cryptocurrencies or is it maybe just uh, a single example of bad governments? It's, a, it's, a, it's an example of our governments for sure. Um, it's definitely not the end of crypto. It could actually be the start because uh, really you could clean out the bad people in the crypto industry and really end up with some regulation which would be good for the industry. And that ultimately could see the crypto industry take off. Uh, but right now, yeah, it's, it's a terrible situation. A lot of people lost a lot of money. And, and some of those in the UK, 4% of a, of a million people in the UK. So 40,000 people, I believe. Uh, have you any idea about uh, personal losses? Have you heard any stories about how much individuals have lost? No, they haven't publicised it yet. Um, they've just given a list of the biggest losers uh, with no names. Uh, so we don't know that, unfortunately, yet. In fact, uh, the whole thing's, you know, there's so many rumours, Michael. You know, it's difficult even preparing for your programme. They asked me to talk and it's like, OK, what's the rumours and what's true? Um, I'm really trying to come to, you know, sort of, these are the facts and these are the things that are not known yet. Uh, given what has happened here and that some people have lost money, even if we don't know how much, uh, is it advisable for the average person to be advising cryptocurrencies? That's a good question. I mean, we certainly need regulation, that's for sure. Um, I think people need to understand what they're doing. And don't forget, you can uh, you can trade cryptocurrency, but you can take it offline. Uh, so uh, that's really the key. And everybody says they're not your keys unless you take them offline. Okay, and that, I think that's that's crucial. Should you leave your money on exchange? No. What What is the sort of regulation that you think is appropriate? By whom? Uh, well, governments have to regulate the exchanges first of all. So, you know, if you if, if you put your money with a bank, so let's let's say an uh, exchange is very similar to a bank. Uh, if you take FTX, the money's come in, and they've given the impression that the money's there. So they've built software on top to make it look as if the money's in, not in the account. Uh, then they've used that money and they've lent it to a fund which they're running. Um, and uh, some of that money's gone into their own pocket. Um, and then the rest of it, it's almost like they've put everything on black and it's come up red. Um, there's been some crazy thing going on and they've been using other people's money to do it. Uh, presumably, uh, investigations are being made. There is a possibility of criminal prosecution here. There has to be, um, absolutely. But I mean, there's all sorts of implications. There's political implications as well. Uh, Democrats had 50 million um, given to them by FTX. You know, and uh, of course, again, you know, I don't want to start rumours. Um, I'm not starting them, am I? They're actually there already. Uh, so, so, you know, already people are saying, are the Democrats taking this seriously? Is the regulator in America? I mean, even Gary Glensler, that's the head of the SEC, you know, people are saying he hasn't taken action. So regulators 100% need to take action, and that's a global thing. Uh, but you've also got influencers that have uh, been happy to be paid and stand up and say this is good. Um, Tom Brady included, and you know, what a great footballer. Uh, but unfortunately, his name's been involved, and uh, you know, how, how, do you, how do you handle that? I mean, this morning Elon Musk said that Twitter is gonna have payments on it, and Dogecoin went up 20%. So all you need is Elon on side and boof. Uh, so <laughs> right now, um, yeah, you need to understand what it is and be cautious. I, I set out earlier this sort of argument that had been made in favor of cryptocurrencies. And a big part of that argument seemed to be that it didn't need regulation, that it was free from regulation, and therefore that you were likely to make more money. Do you believe that regulation would bring any disadvantage to cryptocurrency investors? 
depends how far the regulation goes. I mean, right now, if you're using a bank and you send your money to America or you're sending money to perhaps Latin America, it goes via via. Um, so it's expensive. The banks make money um, and it's super slow. So if you have cryptocurrencies that, that are less regulated and super fast, then it saves people money. I mean, how much is, is in remittances around the world? And you end up with people, it costs them an absolute fortune, particularly if they use Western Union, to send their money somewhere else abroad. So if you have a good digital system that has some regulation, but not excessive regulation, that has to be to the benefit of everybody globally. Yes, uh, that is an interesting uh, point. Tell us a little bit about this particular story. How was it that FTX came to grief? How was it caught out? Um, so what happened was they had their own token, uh, which was FTT. Um, and the token was held by lots of people, including Binance. Uh, so then there was, it was publicized that they had debts and they didn't have enough assets to cover the debts. It was also said that they were negotiating with the regulator, so the SEC, uh, to get favorable terms for themselves and not for other uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. Binance uh, announced that they had, uh, FTX had not enough reserves. They said they were selling the tokens. So then, if you like, there was a run on the bank. Uh, everybody was cashing in, everybody was trying to sell. So, you know, it doesn't matter what bank it was in the world, if everybody's taking their money out, guess what? Last man in. Um, so it collapsed. Um, but, but literally, then when it collapsed, they found no accounts, no board meetings. Uh, the company was run by a messaging system that had disappearing messages. I mean, it sounds like super horrific. And why was nobody watching? I mean, it was in the Bahamas. Uh, they come out red faced. Um, difficult. And yet, Despite that, you believe that cryptocurrency will be a very important part of the future. Explain why. I think it's a failure of government. I think it's a failure of regulation. Um, I don't think it's a failure of crypto. So, you know, the underlying product is good. Crypto is good. Digital currencies is good. They're efficient. So I think there's a Sam Bankman free failure. There's an FTX failure. That doesn't mean there's a crypto failure. Okay, the underlying reasons why crypto is good are still there and still intact. But um, the people I speak to who are invested in crypto, I am not myself, talk of it uh, with enormous ups and downs. I mean, they talk about it more or less as though it were bet betting on a horse. Uh, I, I mean, are you suggesting that it's going to continue to be like that? Or is it in some way going to become you know, embedded as an accepted and, if I may use the term, thoroughly respectful part of the financial system? I believe it will be a respected part of the financial system. Um, so just, uh, you know, just think yourself, okay, let's try and persuade you, shall we? Uh, so if we've got, we got Bitcoin, there's a limited amount. So you've got 21 million Bitcoin, so the code limits it. Uh, so let's say the Labour government get in. Am I allowed to, allowed to swear on this programme? Uh, so Labour get in and uh, they decide everybody needs to be equal. So they start printing money. So they start uh, flooding, the, flood, flooding the country with money. Uh, and guess what? Okay, the pound devalues. So people believe that if you've got a computer keeping score, that's better than a government keeping score. So that's a good principle. You can send money inexpensively. That's a good principle. So there's some good principles there that I believe ultimately will come through. Things like FTX damage confidence. Volatility damages confidence. So it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but I believe ultimately we will get there. Is there any chance of a global regulatory body or failing that a global agreement between governments about what the regulation should be in each territory? Well, it's tough getting governments to agree on anything, isn't it? <laughs> uh, even climate change. Um, I can't see it. So I think you're going to have some governments that are going to be anti, some are going to be for. Um, I mean, is there a case for London, um, sorry, the UK, saying we want to be a digital hub and we want to get it right? You know, the UK has had so much of its success because of financial services. So, you know, could the UK get it and actually regulate it properly and actually um, become a centre? Okay, maybe maybe a good way for uh, Rishi to have a go and uh, rebuild London as a centre, not only from digitalisation with really good regulation. Uh, let's see, but I, I can't see every country agreeing now, unfortunately. 
No, but nonetheless, despite this failure at FTX and the people have lost their money, it sounds as though you are being pretty optimistic and certainly you think that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. Nigel Green, thank you so much for coming on GP News today. My pleasure. Uh, coming up from uh, health secretary to king of the